Hello YouTube, today I'm bringing you a Dana 80 passenger side brake drum setup assembly. And the reason I'm posting this is for the individuals that perhaps dis disassemble maybe both sides of the axle and didn't take enough pictures or didn't take any pictures or maybe the pictures are missing detail of something specific they're looking for. At any rate, I thought I'd walk through the proper assembly on this axle and give you guys some uh, detailed video footage of what that should look like and why things are similar so you can even work through the process yourself even if you don't have pictures or video or something uh, to reference. So starting off, the first thing I frequently get asked is how do you identify the primary versus secondary shoe and what is the primary and secondary shoe's location on a drum brake setup? So in applications where the brake cylinder is at the top, not all of them have them at the top, most of them do, but in the applications where your cylinder is at the top, your primary shoe is going to be to the front of the vehicle, your secondary shoe is going to be to the rear. So what's the difference between the two different shoes? I use an acronym, BOB, BOB standing for big on back. The first thing you're going to notice is the friction material is thicker on the secondary shoe versus the primary shoe. You can see that it's definitely thinner. In addition to that, the length of the material is going to be longer on the secondary shoe than it is on the primary shoe. Now for reference, I have my other set of shoes here. You can see that I've got the webbing and the friction material lined up. We work our way around to the other end. You can clearly tell the bottom shoe is going to be your secondary shoe. As it is longer, it is also thicker. So to recap, secondary shoe goes on the back, primary shoe goes on the front. You can identify the secondary shoe by using the acronym BOB, big on back, and everything about it is bigger. The friction material is thicker as well as longer. Moving on, you have this bar in here. The first thing you can tell for orientation is the spring is going on the right side for the passenger installation. You know the spring goes on this side of the bar because there is a machine step in here, a shoulder for that spring to rest on so the spring can't go any further back. In addition to that, the webbing for your primary shoe, you can see it's wide enough for that spring to go within. There's also a curvature to this bar. This bar curves inboard, providing clearance for your wheel hub bearing assembly to go out here. If you have this inverted and that curve comes out, you won't have room for your hub assembly. In addition, on this end, there's, so it's a tang that goes on both sides of your parking brake arm. On this inside one, there's a tang and it actually points upward. The orientation of the tang is not as important as the fact that there just is a tang back here and that tang basically tells you that it's difficult and not appropriate to try and put a spring on. In addition, there is no step over here to stop the spring from really trying to go much further up the, uh, the bar. The spring's orientation, I put the spring on in this orientation with this eyelet uh, towards the outbound or out, outboard side here. And the reason I do that is it provides torsional tension. So you can, you can tell that there's tension pressing against that uh, the webbing there. So the purpose of the spring is to stop the bar from vibrating and rattling on the uh, shoes. The eyelet, in my opinion, its purpose is to stop the spring from rattling on the bar. Uh, so I suppose you could probably get a similar uh, effect if you had this flipped around with the eyelet resting right here on this nub. But this way I know for a fact that it definitely will stop rattling. Moving on, we have the parking brake arm. So the parking brake arm is behind the secondary shoe. It is attached via a pin that is uh, part of the parking brake assembly. It has an E-clip on there. Between the webbing and the parking brake arm is a wave washer. That wave washer is also, uh, its purpose is to stop rattling from occurring. So if you have a washer show up somewhere and you don't know where it goes, it's the only spot that there's a wave washer in this entire assembly and I do recommend having that put back in there just to keep noise and rattling to a minimum that way down the road if you start to hear abnormal noise coming from your brake system if you know everything was assembled correctly then you know it's probably time to maybe take it apart and see what is causing the noise that uh, should not be there 
The next piece that I see people miss are, is a spring down here. So this is your self-adjusting arm. And this purpose of this spring here is to keep the resting position of the arm in the up direction. When you back up and you apply the uh, brakes abruptly, the proper function of this arm is to actually swing downward. And when it swings downward, it's grabbing a tooth on your self-adjuster and expands everything out. Continuing our conversation. So with the self-adjuster, you want to make sure that there's proper lubrication in here. So this is your threaded, threaded side, and this is like a cap side. Both of these are uh, trapped by the webbing on the shoes. So this is the only part here that spins. You want to make sure both of these are freely moving. You don't need a ton of grease in there. And more importantly, you want to make sure there's no corrosion in there. Uh, I see people pack these full, completely full of grease. Uh, in my opinion, that tends to attract more of the brake dust and whatnot and just kind of hinders its uh, free-flowing ability. Retaining uh, springs and clips here. The way I install these, I just push them on by hand and I'll push the pin through the back side of the uh, backing plate. And instead of trying to twist the spring side and the retainer side, which is rather difficult because you have the tension on there and everything about that resists twisting, I just push the pin through and give the pin a 90 degree turn and then I just let the spring off. It, it's easy, it's nothing too terrible, it's not super hard to press these springs down and you get to see everything you're doing while you're working on it. What else do we have? Let's go through the spring orientation. So the silver goes on first, orange is the second. I think you can probably flip those two around and not have any major uh, ill effects with that. But if I recall correctly, this is the factory installation. And um, in addition, I think this gives you the best geometry for your springs and your all your attachment points without having any, any rubbing or anything like that. So yeah, I put my silver silver on, on first, and I'll put the blue on, and then I'll put the uh, orange on after that. The spring over here on your parking brake assembly. This spring you should never have to remove unless you're replacing your park brake or your self adjuster arm. There's one spring down here on your self adjuster. So when I'm replacing the drum or the shoes. I'll leave the spring, the self adjuster, everything attached to the, the sh brake shoes, and I'll pull it all off as, as one assembly and replace that spring while it's on the ground. As you can see, trying to swap that guy in or out while it's in the vehicle, you could probably do it, but you're not going to like life too terribly much by doing that. Backing plate lubrication. So there's three points around each shoe, about midpoint, and then there's going to be one down towards the bottom. You'll know where they're at. It's important to have lubrication on them, but I don't think the lubrication is important to keep everything moving freely. It's more important that it's present to suppress corrosion. In my opinion, if you have too much grease in there, it's going to have kind of an adverse effect of either attracting road debris or brake dust. If you don't have any on there, it'll probably be fine for a while, but then it's most certainly going to promote corrosion, which... You know, if a vehicle sits for a while or you guys are on the East Coast, it could bind up your shoes on your backing plate and then you're rendered without anything at all. I also apply a little bit of lubrication on the inside of uh, each one of your pens on your uh, cylinder there. And I also apply just a little bit of grease up here on your pivot point. So th these guys here rotate within that. It also keeps some of the crap and stuff from trying to uh, enter your, your cylinder there. And this here with your primary shoe, it actually comes off that pin. It moves around quite a bit off your rotation here. So it's good to have something in there. Again, in my opinion, mostly to suppress uh, corrosion. So that's what we've got for today. Hope this helps somebody that may have uh, inadvertently taken everything apart and can't remember where it went. Or maybe even tried to document how it should go back together and uh, can't figure it out. We've all been there. Hope you can help you out. I hope everybody has a good day, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.